Lunch with Leah, episode 231. Oh, I forgot to do a teaser. I hope everybody tuned in. James, I think, did a Oh, lot. James he did it. Thank it. you, James. I think. I just saw something saying James watch. is in here today. I hope he's tweeting, telling everyone to watch. I think you did. I think I saw something. You know, James, after this, we just may not need you, James. This is the most <laughs> fabulous show we've ever done without you. We miss you, though. The dog misses you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, so if you're wondering about my tiara, I decided to honor the royal wedding and participate. <laughs> I mean, honestly, did you guys watch it? We'll talk all about it later, but I have a lot to say about it. I've got my little tiara on instead of my big hat. I actually wore an aquamarine ring because that's the ring that yes. Harry gave her as a wedding that was Princess Diana's, so I wore mine. I hate to upstage the princess, but I mean, really, this is 40 years <laughs> And that's a big ring. Uh, okay, so, oh, and then she had the little Cartier diamonds, and I had to upstage those, too, with the Ooh. bigger diamonds. So, we are all in today. What's going on? Well, I'm going to be going to L.A. soon for a while, but don't think about getting into my house. i got four security dogs, <laughs> a security person, and two people living in the house, one in the cottage and one in the pool house. So... We're all guarded. You, you won't be able to get in. <laughs> uh, plus, I'll take all my jewelry. <laughs> I'll put it in the I bank. That reminds me, I put it in the bank. Um, anyway, so that's what's going on. Because my kitchen is being renovated, which reminds me, Jason, we need to get updated pictures of the yard, the outdoor kitchen, the indoor kitchen, and the yard that they're expanding. We need to get those pictures. Okay. Uh, I need to get those so I can see what they're doing. Now, Jeff called me yesterday. God bless him. And he goes, I only have a minute. He's always in a hurry. I only have a minute. I'm pulling him to some property. I've got to get off the phone, but I just want to give you the update. The kitchen this, the this, the that, the other. Anyway, I guess from what in his fast forward uh, talking that I heard was that um, the kitchen on the inside, the house is totally empty and David's refinishing the floors. The outdoor kitchen is almost done. The countertops are spectacular, he said. Ooh. And the pendants came in, which are the lights that hang over that are gorgeous. They're in his house. They said, go put them in my house. Get them out of your garage. And everything's going smooth, and everything's going to be done early in June. Cross your fingers. And then I wanted to start asking him about other stuff. He goes, I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. I think you should all... Uh, tweet him right now and remind him you better have me on that radio show all the time all summer what else is going on oh that's on uh, Andy a radio Andy on Sirius radio and uh, it's on Friday mornings we have to get there at 7 and we film it no we film at 8 and it's on at 11 here so I have to get up like 6 30 that's really hard for me but I do it with bells on Meanwhile, speaking of the radio, oh my god, I'm so stupid. I feel like such a fool. On the other hand, I am heartbroken. I found out there's there's no Santa Claus. <laughs> so I'm listening to Radio Andy, where Andy and Jeff were on together talking, and they're talking about how Jeff nor I knew that Helvetica didn't really live in Perth. <laughs> and I'm so devastated cool. because I, every time I'm in the car listening to Helvetica, I'm thinking, I've got to Google her and see what she looks like. I bet she has this fabulous platinum blonde hair and all this big jewelry. And she's in Perth right there overlooking the ocean. And I have this whole vision in my head about Helvetica. And Helvetica is not really Helvetica. I also Helvetica. thought that it was everybody did, and I told Jim this is like there's. I found out there's no Santa. It's really John Hill with the most amazing Helvetica Perth accent I've ever heard in my life. And I used to just look so forward. I still like to listen to Helvetica, but I'm I'm just depressed because I just imagine this drag queen in this big like robe, you know, laying there with her feet up on the bed, talking on the radio with this big fabulous hair and makeup and the long nails and all the jewelry. I just could see Helvetica and I was curious. I said, I've got to go Google Helvetica and see if she looks like what I think she looks like. Sam <laughs> John Hill! How, why did they spoil it? Why did they just keep that the best kept secret and let everyone think that? I think I think oh, it's obvious, but oh. I didn't think so. Me, you know, I know. I just think, Everyone, how can they think it's obvious? I'm thinking they're calling in 
to so Australia <laughs> 12 hours ahead and wow they really got to coordinate this and wow this Helvetica must be a real star over there to get her on the radio I can't even believe it no Santa Claus anymore <laughs> Well, anyway. everybody, just your audience okay. sub comments, a lot of interaction actually. Oh, let's hear it. Uh, good stuff. Uh, it says here, everyone's loving your tiara. Oh, um, in honor of the new princess of Jeff. Sussex. Nancy saying she love your love your baubles beautiful, Leah. You're what? pretty. Margaret says you're pretty in pink today. Oh. Uh, the tiara is fabulous. Margaret says. Um, oh, I wore the, the bright summer color because if you noticed at the wedding, which we're going to talk about later, people were wearing these fabulous bright, I mean, the queen wore like this chartreuse kind of lime green. It was just, and I read about that. And they said the reason the queen dressed in that color is her subjects want to see her and they want to be able to see her where she is. And if she had a regular color on, she wouldn't stand out as much. Isn't that fascinating? Smart. That's fascinating? So I'm going to start wearing lime green everywhere I go so that I can stand out. That was a brilliant <laughs> idea. Like, but the, everything at the everything in the um, palace is so coordinated. They're so smart. Everything was just so smart. Meanwhile, last night, oh no, we went to RJ's piano recital Sunday. That went well. He did really good. He played two songs. And he has the fastest moving fingers I've ever heard, but the two songs that he played, I put on my Instagram. Uh, they were one minute each, so I was able to put them on there. But those weren't his best songs. His head's not in it right now. And in his mind right now, he's already, school's over. <laughs> he's, not paying, <laughs> he's not paying attention. He's sitting there playing the piano. Let's check the box. Okay, let's go take the test. Check the box. He's not into it. But listen to this. So last night, RJ was inducted into this uh, it's a national or international, I'm not sure, Chinese Honor Society. So just listen to what happens. So which is a great little honor for him. I mean, he's one of the few English-speaking kids that is in the Honor Society. Most of them grew up with it or they're around it a lot. He's been taking Mandarin since he was in the first grade or before. So listen to what happens. He gets that. I don't know where it's posted, but this morning I get a call, a text from a guy that's an alumni of Ransom congratulating him. I'm like, you're still watching the Ransom website. You're 50 years old. But obviously he is. I thought, well, that's interesting. But then listen to what comes onto my phone. Listen to this. I like Dr. King. So, how, how do they do this? The Chinese people in the world now know there's someone in our house that speaks Chinese and they're giving me oh, phone solicitation. Oh, no. Isn't that scary? Oh my gosh. I got a phone solicitation in, from Ch in Chinese this morning. It, this only happened at 8 o'clock last night. So, between 8 o'clock last night and oh 8 o'clock this morning, I'm now on some solicitation phone list of Chinese speaking people. Big Brother is watching. I mean, I'm. I don't. I don't like that. I don't no. think they should be able to access your stuff. Anyway, that's well, speaking enough of for watching, that. you've got Barbie from Mykonos saying hello. Yes. You've got um, Vikrant from India saying hello. So we've got Greece. And we've got you. India. And UK. From, and the UK. Oh, speaking of UK, I'm going to be there in June, and I'm going to be doing some public appearances and some book tours and some TV and some radio and everything. So if you're in the UK and you want a public appearance while I'm there, not that I'm anyone fabulous, but I mean, it isn't a dumb blonde American <laughs> coming from TV that used to be on the lowest hanging fruit TV show ever, uh, get a hold of us at hello at leahblack.com. We'll book a public appearance and we'll promote whatever you're selling. It'll just be fun, it's something to do, whatever. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> oh. In other news, Tina Fey going to be back. Was back on Saturday Night Live as Sarah Palin. I missed it, but I heard it was just hilarious. Then, there, and sad news: another shooting, another damn shooting at a school. Ten kids and two teachers dead. I can't take it anymore. You guys, we have to rise up. We have to stand up. We have to stop. There are five million people are members of the NRA. How is it that five million people? And all that money are controlling all of damn Congress, or at least the Republican Congress. How is that possible? I, I just can't. 
we got to stand up. You've got to get involved. You've got to write your legislatures. You've got to write your congressmen. You've got to write your senators. You've got to write your governors. Say, enough. We don't want our kids going to school having to duck bullets. The money's not worth it. Forget about it. Look it up and you'll see who's getting money from the NRA and you need to flood their office with emails and phone calls. Who's calling now? Oh, hmm, nothing. Okay. Oh, Virgin Voyage. You remember uh, Richard Branson is going to start that cruise line? It's, the first pictures of it came out. Oh my God, it's stunning. It's going to launch in 2020 from Miami. So thank you, Richard Branson, for bringing the uh, opportunity to Miami and the commerce to Miami. It's going to hold 2,700 passengers. That's way too many for me. I could not make it. I could not. I get claustrophobic in a restaurant that's too full. So I couldn't make it with 2,700 passengers. But somebody's going to have a fabulous time. Then, speaking of, this isn't really political, but it is, kind of. And I'm not even going to do politics today. I'm so sick of, oh God, the corruption. Anyway, did you see that guy in the, re in the restaurant or in the place in New York, the fast food place, fresh food place or whatever, <laughs> go on that rant about the people speaking Spanish? Oh, the lawyer. So this guy yes. was so cute, dressed perfectly. Went go here's these women speaking in Spanish, and here's another group speaking in Spanish, and goes on this rant about Spanish-speaking people, and this is his country, and they don't belong here, and then he gets the manager over there, and he's going on and on, and he's steaming, smoke is coming out his ears. Somebody videoed it, it went viral, and I don't agree with the guy, and I think he was inappropriate, and he, and he really didn't have to make a fuss like that, but the people also spoke English. It wasn't like they only spoke Spanish. But I don't really think the consequence that the, that the punishment met the crime. They kicked him out of his building where he had his law office. And now he's being hunted in the streets of New York by the press all the time. And he's try having to hide out. I mean, I don't think we have to kill the guy, you know, because of it. But it was inappropriate. Oh, and I think the bar in, floor, in uh, New York might be hold, you know, holding him accountable or sanctioning him or something. I mean, this well, guy... Well, he has a history of it. Yeah, he has a history of it, and it's wrong, but he still has the right no, to just, free speech. Exactly. And if he's not hurting anybody other than verbally screaming and making a fool of himself, I don't know that he should lose his job over it, even though what he said was horrible. Let's go to the wedding. Oh my God, You've the got, wedding. Um, again, Martin lots of comments. Yeah, let's hear it. All good. They were obviously set off, uh, um, responding to the lawyer story. Uh, Alex is saying not the lawyer guy, but it was the lawyer guy, obviously. So yes, he's right. Well, um, he should know better too. He's an educated lawyer. It's not like somebody that doesn't know better. That's true. You know? Uh, Margaret is saying yes. His name's Schlossberg, <laughs> preaching about Spanish. <laughs> Margaret, let's go ahead and explain. And get him on somebody else's dipshit list. And Alex is saying the court of public opinion is worse. So maybe he has a point there. Um, but everybody's saying you look fabulous and that's oh, it. Thank so, you. so the court of public opinion. So people are saying people have piling on and him losing his job and having to move out of his law office building is worse than what he did. Yes. Well, that he made, that's a point. I mean, I think the guy has the right to say it. But it's not proper to say it, you know? Yes. I mean, it's just, I don't know. But it is, is not it's his first story. offense, but then they videoed it, and then, oh, my God, it just goes on. I told my son, RJ, be careful. They're <laughs> videotaping us all the time. Don't ever post anything on any social media. I mean, you got to run around paranoid, but let's go to proper <laughs> news. The Queen and the Middleton. Middleton did not look. Did you notice at that wedding, I watched it. I reran it twice because I couldn't watch it live. Are you kidding? I had to TV it. So Roy had to go to Palm Beach to work, which means he stayed overnight, which means I could watch TV all night as loud as I <laughs> wanted to. So I watched it all night long. Middleton did not even look up at them during the vows. Kate Middleton. Oh my God. I wonder. I didn't think of that. I'm wondering if she's jealous or she feels like someone's stealing the spotlight or if she's not approving of the marriage or if she is just that's her personality maybe it's nothing maybe i'm reading too much into it but if you go back and look she had she the hat did. slanted yes. this way they're over here so she would have had to turn her head a little bit to look the whole time she's looking down once she kind of glanced over and the only time i saw her smile the entire wedding is when one of the people from the church whatever they call him a cardinal or whatever walked by and she smiled at him 
The rest of the time, she looked uncomfortable, awkward, and unhappy. You know what she did? I, now, I've never I thought want of you guys to around. go back if you have it and People look at it and tell do. me why. I mean, she should have had been smiling and had a grin on her face and been so happy for them. And I thought maybe it's because she's not in the wedding party. But her kids were in the wedding party. And then, you know, I don't know. It was the strangest thing I've ever seen. I, I was embarrassed for her. Anyway, she did not look at the look at them during the vows at all. And then on the patio, when she when everyone was waving him and everything, she's bending down, talking to the little girl, pointing. It's like she couldn't even look at it. I don't know. I, I don't know. Some people. You know, I hope funded. she's not the jealous type because yeah. jealousy is the most horrible disease anyone can have. I am so blessed that I was not born with a jealousy gene, or I did not live up around live around it and, and acquire it. Uh, it could be a product of your environment, I don't know, but I'm so glad that I don't have that because I am genuinely happy for anybody that gets anything great. I'm thrilled for them, you know? And But there are people that are just so jealous. I can think of a couple, one particularly, was so jealous that they just can't live their life because they're so envious of what everybody else has. They just have to be tearing people down. But anyway, I hope she doesn't have that and I hope that, I hope it's not. Uh, I hope it's just she was distracted, I don't know. And then did it, I also caught a glimpse of it looked like Prince Charles kind of dozed off for a second. Now, I don't know <laughs> if that's true either. They will not be inviting me to any weddings or any oh, commentary. No. I will not be welcome in the UK now. But I caught a glimpse of him kind of dozing off a little bit. I don't know. I'm hoping I'm not right. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. She did have a beautiful bracelet on her right hand that I noticed the diamonds went all the way around and they were small, intricate diamonds. She was appropriate for the wedding, but now that the wedding's over, girl, go for it. Get in that damn vault. She had those little Cartier earrings, so I brought my similar big ones. And then she had that, <laughs> she had a nice little tiara, but she didn't overdo it. She kind of knows her place. She wasn't trying to upstage anybody. She was trying to be kind of humble and, and quiet and elegant. And so I thought that it was pulled off without a hitch myself. The dress, people said the dress was uneventful. I think that's the point. I think she was just being classic, elegant, and timeless. You know, that dress that she wore was just timeless. It, it was just, I thought it was flawless. I loved the little peekaboo shoulders, kind of sending a little nod to, you know, we're not gonna be so puritanic and in the church anymore, but then simple. And then if you notice the sleeves only came to here when in the church, you're only supposed to wear long sleeves. And she kind of cheated that a little bit, like, you know, we're moving things forward, but we're doing it in a nice, subtle way. People are blown away with that black choir. Did you see the looks on people's faces when that black preacher started, those black people started singing that, that gospel choir thing? It was amazing. People were like shocked. I think it was the best thing they've ever done. Brilliant. It was brilliant. It's like, you know what? This is who I am. I'm going to own it. You need to accept it. This is the world we live in today, and let's celebrate it. And that choir was so magnificent, but people were, I saw a couple of jaws drop. And some of those upper stiffies type people, you know, they were just shocked. I don't think they've ever experienced it, seen it or heard it or even knew it existed in the world and they were just shocked by it. But everyone seemed to embrace it. So I thought that was amazing. Now the preacher, the, the, the one that did the ceremony was very proper and traditional, but the black preacher that did the, the gospel sermon, I loved him. He started off with Martin Luther King and he ended with Martin Luther King. He was just really great. That was good. And then her little mother, oh, her little mother was so sweet. Apparently her mother teaches yoga and she met her husband who's white caucasian when she was a makeup artist and he was in the film industry filming a lighting industry and in in doing television lighting and that's how they met and um so i love the fact she wore her little braids to kind of embrace you know her culture and i just thought she was so poised and so sweet and prince charles was uh so nice to her he's holding her hand and walking her around and made her feel very included and i thought that was lovely i felt bad that dad couldn't go there because you know a lot of people think he didn't really have a heart attack but i don't think you fake a heart attack <laughs> i don't think so i mean do you i mean 
I would hope fake, not. I don't think he would fake a heart attack or lie about a heart attack. I mean, that would just that be would like a out, really dangerous thing to put out in yeah. the universe. It's like people that get over those handicapped stickers. Somebody offered me one one time. They said, oh, I got two handicapped stickers and I only have one car if you want it. I'm like, I don't want to have a handicapped sticker on my car because I don't want to bring it being handicapped into existence. I don't even want the thought of being handicapped in my car. Are you, what are you, crazy? <laughs> Oh, I mean, okay. people, whatever. Uh, let's see. The cost of the hats. I was seeing a little doc, mini documentary and a little interview on the hats. Some of those hats were $2,000 and $2,500 handmade. People kind of made fun of some of the hats. Um, uh, what was her name? Oh, God. Camilla. Camilla DeVille. <laughs> Camilla had on that hat with all the feathers. I thought it was gorgeous. Uh, people made fun of it. Now, I'll tell you the one I thought was ridiculous. I hate to say it. I love this woman. I love this couple. I love everything about them. The smartest, most classy, most fabulous people. But this one, right here, she this dress came all the way down. The picture, I don't know why I didn't take that on the picture. I should have got a better picture. She, to me, looked like a mango smoothie with a, what do you call that? Like a, <laughs> what do you call it? Flying saucer. On it was like a mango smoothie with a flying saucer on her head. I'm sorry. I, I love her. But why did she dress like that? That color number one in that hat. I mean, she's so elegant. I don't know. I just. I thought he looked that. like he, he looked like he was dressed to go to the horse races, not a wedding. Yeah. I didn't like that I suit either. They, I don't think that they did. I didn't even notice him to be honest. But you're right. And you know, I just don't think that they hit it out of the park. A lot of people thought she was the most best dressed one there. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of taste. Now this is another one. I love this woman's taste. I love her style. I love her entrepreneurship. I love everything about her. She looked like she's going to a damn funeral. Victoria yes. Beckham. Why would she dress like that for a wedding? She looks like she was going to a funeral. And her husband was all smiles and chatty and shaking hands and she was walking around like she sister? sucked a lemon. I don't understand it. I was yeah. just, I don't know. I don't know. And then the cousins, you know, Beatrice and uh, what's his name's daughters. Remember the one that wore the crazy hat before? And uh, to me, honestly, I hate to say it. I, I really do. Because I I hate it. Oh, am I so catty? Oh, I hate myself. I can't help it. I'm just going to say what my thought bubble. I have to say it. They remind me of the sisters in Cinderella. The two sisters that couldn't be in the chorus. Remember the ones knee cricked? I mean, they just look like the frumpy sisters from Cinderella. I mean, I just, they just can't. I mean, you can, I mean, you can take the girl out of the country, but they're just not, I can't. I, I don't know. I feel bad for them. I mean, why don't they a stylist and you know, I don't know I just hate myself anyway Should I put the sign now, up as James does <laughs> allegedly. and then um, you know another thing I noticed was I love now the new look of this uh, Meghan Markle when she first came out in that wrap coat with that tie on it I was so annoyed by that because it wasn't chic and tailored and elegant it was just fun and sassy and I didn't like that as her debut, but I find out now she wore that coat because her friends a designer and her friend made the coat. Uh, so now so I feel bad that I said them. that because she's trying to help her friend get her business going. <laughs> oh, but you know, friend, just take the sash off and put a beautiful little pill button there and it'll be gorgeous. Oh my God. Next. Then hair, listen to this. So Harry picked the bouquet out of the garden that morning. Can you believe that? For her oh, to carry. Yeah. And all those flowers were fresh flowers picked from the gardens of the palace. So, you know, that was kind of a nice, simple touch too. It's like, we're not going to hire all these flowers and send all these flowers in from all over the world and overdo it. We're just going to embrace, you know, the beauty of the environment that we're going to be living in. Of course, you're going to be living in the I was just about to say, it must be nice oh, to have God, a huge garden. Nice. But that's like what you used to do. Remember, we go to those black ties and you see 500 dollar centerpiece in the center of the table. Jason and I, if we couldn't get them donated, we'd go get palm palms <laughs> off the trees and put them down and put some lemons and a candle there and call it a day because we weren't willing to pay for a bunch of flowers that are going to die in two days when the charity needed the money. And then all their money they asked, instead of making gifts, they asked for donations to Diana's charities. I thought that was lovely. She was very poised. Another thing I noticed about her, she knew every word to all the songs. And she's not, I don't think she grew up with those songs and then That's she knew true. all the like to the, the 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 national anthem of the uk she knew that she knew she memorized all of that she memorized so Good she point. did her homework 
to make that wedding come off the way it did. And good, she's a smart girl, obviously. And then I, <laughs> she knew the word to all those prayers, too. I mean, who knows those prayers? I would have to be cheating, too. But then um, she also had that wave down. You know, you're not supposed to wave like this. You're supposed to wave just from the wrist. Because I've studied the wave. You know, because, you know, when I'm, when I'm out in public and I, I want my subjects, you know, I don't want to be, you know. So she had the wave down. She had that little wrist wave down. You know, she had it down. And I was like, she has really studied this and learned it and stepped up to the plate. She's going to be a power to be reckoned with. And they're going to embrace her. And let me tell you, she's going to do charitable work all over the world. And she's going to she's going to bring the royal uh, family back into the limelight again like Diana did in a different way. I really think she is. <clears throat> and then all the kids were so cute. But then... I thought she knocked it out of the park with that uh, Stella McCartney. Um, oh, beautiful dress! She went to the party in that night. The white was, it was just stunning. Oh. It was just stunning. It's and stunning. then the fact she had G Givenchy do the wedding gown with the first female designer of the house of Givenchy. She had, she made a lot of little subtle statements. Uh, and then I was reading, or James told me. That do you know that Princess Diana refused to wear Chanel after he, she heard about the affair with Camilla because of Camilla and Charles, the two C's. So she refused to wear Chanel after that. Sure. I wonder if she donated it to anybody. Kyle Richards needs it. Her house was broken into. <laughs> <laughs> and then apparently they had a sweet and sour wedding cake. It had lemon Ooh, and then yeah. it had something sweet in it. And I mean everything was just down to perfection. The royal, they know pomp and circumstance, the Brits. I mean, I'm telling you, the royal family has got the pomp and circumstance down to the second. Everything was flawless. You know the queen went home and just had a big old drink and said, <laughs> done. But you kind of get the sense that the, that the uh, queen's husband, what's his name, Albert, I guess, or whatever, he's retired kind of, he's 96, she's 92 or 94, and you get the feeling that they're kind of in, uh, they're all behind this transition of the new generation. You get the yes. feeling that they're like, that they, they feel they're handy, putting it over into good hands. And I think they are. I think Kate Middleton has been a very good uh, wife. You know, she's been very understated. She's dressed very simply. She hasn't gone out and made any big faux pas. And she's had three kids. You know, they love that breeding thing. Oh my God, I'm in being told of the breeding. And then they've got, now they've got Megan and Harry. And Harry's very popular. And he did all that charity work for years. Plus, he was in the military for 10 years flying those helicopters in the middle of the night and went to Afghanistan. So I think the royal family is in good hands, and I like the royal family and their traditions, and I think they bring a lot of money and economy to Britain, and I don't think anyone should complain about them. There you go. Now let's go from royalty to trashiness. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> what should well, we got, start with? We've got lots and lots of comments. Well, oh, let's hear it. Lots. I mean, this is Is anyone great. interested in what I have to say about yes. the wedding? I'm just curious. A lot of people agreed with you. Um, uh, Bobby wanted to mention that there was uh, a, an empty chair for Diana, apparently. Oh, there. I didn't miss that. Thank you, Bobby. Um, I'm wearing my aquamarine in honor. They her. agree with you about the, 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 the fashion. A lot of people also thought that maybe uh, Kate Middleton wasn't at her best spirits because remember she's a mom and she was probably exhausted and she has the baby and then she was also trying to keep an eye on and the And 1,700 spirit. handmaidens. <laughs> but that's what I was about to yeah. say. But then she probably has a huge staff. She so has a huge staff. I don't think she has to worry I too mean, much. I mean, yeah, she may be overwhelmed and worrying about the two kids, two kids, but... The day before, no. She's got, she's got a staff of seven. Something was, I don't I know. Maybe that. she was fighting with her husband. It could be anything. It could be she had a sick stomach. It could be, I'm not going to make a judgment about it. I'm going to make an observation about it. She was not fully engaged in the, in the ceremony. I agree now thinking back and looking at it. And go look at it again. We're on point. it back. And that was it. But everybody's Anyway, so my aquamarine, because he gave her, which I thought was a lovely, maybe she's jealous that she's going to be sharing the jewelry now. <laughs> Anyway, I'm just making that up. But I thought it was lovely that Harry chose his mother's aquamarine ring to give to Meghan as a wedding gift. How lovely was that? Of course, you know it stays in the royal family. It'll never leave. Oh, sorry. We actually got a correction here. According to Genevieve, oh. the empty chair was not for Diana. Oh. She's saying the seat was empty because no one is allowed to sit in front of the queen. So I don't know oh. about that. We'll have to research these different comments. Well, but either thank you. way... Both are interesting. One, no one can sit in front of the queen. Well, 
That's interesting. <laughs> and then, you know, but they did have Diana's presence there, whether it was the empty chair or not. You <laughs> said all these people got into this whole royal wedding. What a refreshing distraction from the Trump trash True. and politics and, and corruption. It's, it's just so timely. Let's go to the lowest hanging fruit on television right now, the housewives. Let's see, who should we pick on first? Oh, Carol Rodswell. To be nice or not to be nice? That is the question. <laughs> As a woman, it makes me sad to watch another woman who I thought was my friend talk behind my back with such cattiness and disrespect. Referring, obviously, to Bethany. Ooh. Spoiler alert. Would you like it if your boyfriend call if your friend called your boyfriend secretly behind the your back and ask him to go to Houston with them, even if it was Ooh. a charity thing? Yep, that happened. Uh, I haven't blogged in several years and blah, blah, blah. I'm glad to see my friend Bethany step outside of her affluent bubble with her stream of rich boyfriends, rich friends, Ooh. private planes, million dollar homes and five store resort vacations. One gets the impression it's the first time she's written, witnessed real poverty. It can be life changing. I know it was for me many years ago when I, well, this is the truth too. Carol was a reporter. She went all around the world and she got the most, just like Anderson Cooper, so they get the war zones, they get the poverty, they get the devastation. She lived that all of her life. And Bethany walks in and acts like, oh my God, I've never seen anything like this in my life and doesn't even ask Carol, who's really had a ton of experience in dealing with that, to go with her. So I can see how she felt a little snubbed on that. And that's why, oh, by the way, um, Let's see. So, oh, I guess uh, uh, Carol has her own uh, charitable foundation. Well, good for you, Carol. It's a good use of celebrity. And she says, I hope Bethany will be a wiser and kinder person closer to home now. <laughs> but I'm not counting on it. Ooh, As I continue to say, I'm proud I am of her about Puerto Rico. She continues to be an out of control, aggressive parrot back. Anything Sonia tells her, don't pick on Sonia now. You know, I love Sonia. And Tinsley wrote out a check for ten thousand dollars, and uh, and and she's insulting. Oh, and she's praising her for that, but insulting uh, Carol behind your back. I think uh, mm, that's interesting. And then at lunch, I would love it. Carol is a good writer. At lunch, Dorinda is being verbally waterboarded. <laughs> that's what I call it. Bethany does this often. You've seen it. The way she talks to people, oh my God, and Dorinda's <laughs> being used as a pawn to further Bethany's agenda, but she doesn't know it yet. Oh my God, are you guys, are you kidding? Well, when Carol turns, she turns. She the does. entirety of Bethany's career, other than some minor success, has been as a caterer. She finally found Ooh. reality TV. Oh! And that brought her into this and that. Oh my God, I can't. I don't need to be biting and self-righteous like Bethany to make myself feel better, smarter, and more successful. I hardly recognize the woman on television shaming women simply for having different opinions and interests. She's obnoxious. She Call does. me when you've had some success, uh, Ramona shot back. Oh my God. Oh, oh my, th this is just too much. And Bethany <laughs> did get one thing right about Adam. He's richer in all the ways that count in life that Bethany will never be. Oh, nah. oh my God. Adam me. was 23 dead broke when he created and ran an actual licensed charity and nonprofit that helped him to sustain small farming communities in Nicaragua. He funded, oh, I like Adam, and took money from his rent budget to keep the charity afloat. Well, good for him. You know what? That's so sweet. Ah. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. When Harvey, hit, when Harvey hit last summer, Bethany was partying in Ibiza. I was taking care of a friend whose husband had passed away, and Adam was working hard, commuting three hours between clients each day. So no, Adam couldn't go to Houston at Bethany's whim. He's blah, blah, blah. But the most priceless past the popcorn moment was the bewildered, bitchy look on Bethany's face when she said I was having a book party not for myself but for a friend. Rewind. Wait for it. Another dig at me, I roll. Yes, Bethany, I took a short break from writing books while I am on TV. Oh my God! Click here to order my friend's book. She's pro oh, that's sweet of Carol to promote her friend's yeah. book, Backbone. I'm like that too. I like to promote wow. everybody. Well, Carol has uh, obviously, obviously, there. She, Carol, this is kind of how I think about it. Carol thought Bethany was a, a really close friend, and Bethany is an opportunist and an entrepreneur that saw the opportunity to turn this friendship on the reality show and generate some ratings and probably 
in the in the spirit of you know making the show interesting says a few things that maybe she shouldn't say and maybe carol took them to heart i don't really know i feel terrible because i don't think bethany really feels like that about carol he probably point. really likes her i think she probably appreciates her and likes her but but, I, but she attacks her and sub and and quietly attacks her uh, and then Carol's not having any of it. I don't know. I'm not on anybody's side. I'm just an outside observer. Oh my gosh. Well, anyway, The Real Housewives of Dallas is wrapping up for season three. According to uh, good, a Good Tea, uh, they can expect a lot of glamorous parties and events, including an anniversary, which is likely to be the premiere, a house party, a party, a prom night. Sounds like my oh life. God, about that. <laughs> <laughs> a fashion event. Oh my God, sounds like my life. Uh, anyway, so it's supposed to be really good this, this season coming up. So good for them. I hope it is. All right. Doe, R-H-O-B, my favorite. That's my favorite. Erica confirmed she's not leaving. Well, news flash shock. <laughs> I'm flabbergasted she's not leaving. Obviously. Teddy's coming back. Shocker. That's good. That's you know, good. you never know. I'm glad she's coming back, but you never know. I've seen some other ones that were pretty good and deserved a second chance that didn't come back, but so good for her. Uh, rumors have been circulating that Erica's leaving. No, of course not. And Erica's not left the building. Um, she had been denying it when she was on The View that she's really turned this into a career. I mean, the book, the, the, the View, the, uh, what do you call it, all the performances. I mean, she, she's, she's got it she's going. Right. Uh, anyway, she says, um, Andy confirmed that Teddy's coming back and blah, blah, blah. It was renewed. Oh, it was a renewed. The show was renewed again for next year. Another news flash. So was Dallas, New Jersey, and Orange County. Uh, so there you go. Good for them. All We've right. Got, so, um, lots and lots of comments let's coming hear it. in. In fact, today, Jeepers, everyone very interactive. Oh, I'm loving let's it. Hear it. Uh, a lot of people, Bobby is saying that Carol has upped her fashion game on the, sh on the show this season. Carol on, on Yeah, New she York. feels like she's really pulling it off. Yeah. Uh, you've got people that um, uh, are agreeing with you, and some people are saying, oh, yes, it's New York Housewives tonight. Uh, uh, Jerry Kelly says Oh, it's hello. on tonight? Yes. Oh, oh hi. Jerry, oh, Jerry, Kelly's Jerry Kelly promotes his restaurant Cayuca all the time on his Instagram. Oh my God, the food there is just so amazing. It's so good. If you've never been to Yucca in Miami, you just have to go there. It's just, in its presentation reminds me of Barton G. It's just so beautiful. Anyway. And, well, my God, everybody's on today. Everybody's on today. And then, then you've got Les Bloomberg even saying great Les, style. did you notice my aquamarine in honor of Diana? And then my tiara that my are not gosh. real diamonds, but they kind of are. Is it shining <laughs> properly? I don't want anyone to miss it. Looks it good. Okay. And everybody's just saying hello and fantastic. It's okay, great. well, we're Crazy having fun today. today. Let's see, trivia news. Oh, I think I did that already. Oh, no. Oh, this is one. <laughs> this one got me. This is funny. This woman was got a $7,000 bill for, for charging a toilet paper on Amazon. Oh, so no. she ordered Amazon toilet paper, and the bill came for $7,000. Oh, <laughs> So <laughs> run over there and give me that toilet paper right there, Jason. Because oh, yeah, I'm going to show you what's really worth worth nothing that, <laughs> that people would pay seven thousand for. So yeah, it was eighty eight dollars for the toilet paper, and the shipping was seventy four hundred. <laughs> I think plants. I think Trump's planting these problems for Amazon for Bezos because he hates Bezos. He's so jealous. This is the only toilet paper you need to be buying, <laughs> right here. The Trump toilet paper. You see that little smirk on his face? Okay, that's that. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so does anybody have anything else before we wrap up? Because we've been on for 40 minutes. No, that seems so short. It did. It flew by. So the quote of the week, I'll save this stuff for later. Uh, the quote of the week, my quote of the week. Don't forget to be in London. Don't forget to watch watch what uh, happens live next week. We have our season finale. Exactly. No, 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 not, no, my show. This one, not watch what happens. Yeah. The season finale. <laughs> oh, this is watch what happens live right here. The season finale of Facebook with Leah before the summer break is next Wednesday. We have some surprises for you. It'll be at noon. And people and, must share this. We want them to share oh, all yes. this with all their friends. Hit and... share. Does it hurt you? I do a lot of for everybody. Just hit share. Help me. <laughs> Show. Just hit share. Tweet it out. Watch Facebook Live with Leah. Here's the link. 
Retweet my tweet about the Facebook Live. I need to get this thing going. By the way, it's going to be on a big platform soon. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Quote of the week, my quote of the week, I love my life even when things don't go as planned. That is true. There we go. The positive side positive of everything. Positive side of everything. All right. Well, thank you so much for me and little Blackie Poo, who doesn't mind his mom. And I'll see you guys next week for, can we laugh at ourselves the season finale? <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.